a while. We brought in our uh, our Cabernet Franc off our vineyard yesterday. Uh, I've got more Cabernet Franc coming in later this week. We're, we press off some of the Chamberson. It never stops, okay? But it's a great thing. This time of year is, you know, you, you have to find that, that next level of energy to, to keep going, and, and I always do when I taste one of these. I was at Mount Vernon last Sunday night, and I had a few bottles of our reserve Cab Franc available, and I had to open it up and taste it, make sure it was good. And it would, for me, Petit Bordeaux, I like it, and I think there are some great winemakers doing some fabulous things. I think it's a little one-dimensional, and I don't know if it's gonna be able to take us to the next level in the recognition for that. The reason, go ahead. Well, what I would say is, I I judged for the Governor's Cup in January, and, and Petit Bordeaux was definitely the standout grape yeah. across the board for Virginia. And, and I think what I mean, it is is that you can do Petit Bordeaux and not screw it up. Like we were talking earlier about Viognier. You can do, in general, you can do Viognier in Virginia and not screw it up too bad. Properly, according to what the what the weather's throwing at us, you know I can't ebb and flow as far as my quality goes. I can't ebb and flow as far as my production. I'd rather have less crop, but still make great wine. So if it means we got to drop a little bit of fruit or get it get a, a bunch of side spray in at a certain time to keep that disease from wiping us out, or um, you know just training the vines a little bit more, or just evaluating. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that we do on a regular basis. Again, back to those small differences that are going to make it one of the Well, Chef is here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yay. Excellent job. You never stop learning, and I can tell that, that, that Eduardo is the same way. The meals tonight were very, they were, they were simple, they were clean, they were beautifully presented, and just an, an, an accent of what you work with. And it's just great to see that, and I, that's what I appreciate is, you know, you don't, it, as I describe a wine, you don't want to see the winemaker's hand, you want to see the vineyard. And I felt eating that piece of meat tonight was just delicious, it was so well seasoned. And with the carrots and the potatoes and the sauce, it just all came together and the wine was just, just fabulous. So thank you. Thank you very much. Very good. It's a thank pleasure you. to be here. Um, what would I give him to, to make something that, that, that pairs with it so well? Um, so that's oftentimes how you do that. It is my pleasure when I can to sit down with the chef and, and he sometimes, they will present dishes to me. And I've done that where we just try the wine. Oh, that's good. Oh, well, here's another dish showing up. Let's try that wine again. And it's just, it's, it's incredible when the pairings come together and the flavors that come out of them. And, you know, I was pleased every dish tonight. I think we had really a very good guest. Fantastic. And that, but is that the best way when your turn it is to invite guests to your house and cook? The best way to do it is start with an empty stomach and that glass of wine right in front of you. <laughs> You know, and that's what I did. We went over to Lucinda's. I was say from the wine cellar. From, uh, <laughs> wine cellar. Oh, yeah, wine from the wine cellar. <laughs> and we went over there, and we had an empty stomach, and we started to drink. And all of a sudden, your creativity just explodes. <laughs> so it's a really easy task. Your body will drive you. <laughs> Thank you.